Hi, I'm Mike from thesubstream.com. And thanks for watching this episode of The Film Lab. In the past, we've talked about the basics of exposure and the basics of lenses and how they work. And in the future, we'd like to talk about the art and technique of lighting, because that's the stuff that's cool and sexy that you can really sink your teeth into. But first, we need to know how to talk about light and how to measure it. Light, that is. This is a light meter, and you used to be able to see these things all the time when people actually shot movies and commercials and music videos on film. Film cameras didn't have a cool little flip-out viewfinder on the side of the camera that you could look at and you change the aperture until you were happy with the exposure. And they didn't have cool waveform monitors so you could interpret that data however the hell those dudes interpret that data either. But back in the day, all you knew was the speed of your film and your shutter speed and you had to take this thing and go figure out an aperture, adjust the camera, shoot it, and then not sleep all night hoping that you got it right for when the rushes came back from the lab the next day to see if you actually had an image to work with. It's 2010 and we still need light meters though, even if we only shoot video, because they give us the information that we need to talk in some kind of reliable way about lights and light sources and how multiple light sources in a scene work together or against each other. The light meter inside a video camera, inside every video camera, does a great job of averaging out all of the light information that it gets to produce a proper exposure. That's because it's a reflected light meter. And that means that it takes in all of the light from what it's pointing at, from the lamps, from the window, the light from the lamps and window that reflects off my face and shirt and bounces down the lens of the camera and hits the light meter. It takes all that data and produces an average. But if you want to talk about the amount of light that's falling on any given single part of your scene and not just the whole sum total average of everything, whether it's the amount of light on my face, the amount of light down there under that table, the amount of light here in this patch of sunlight, you need one of these. It's called an incident light meter. It's got a really cool white dome on it, and I'm going to show you how it works. This is an incident light meter, which means that it measures the amount of light that's falling onto the subject rather than the amount of light that's being reflected from the subject. Here's how it works. This little white dome covers up a silicon cell that is photovoltaic, which means that it turns light into electricity, which is why this thing doesn't need a battery. It uses that electricity to move this needle, which conveniently indicates how much light is falling on a little white dome. This information doesn't tell us much. We need this little analog computer down here to help us get where we're going, an f-stop. Say we're shooting film. Funny, I know. ISO 100. It could be 40, it could be 3200, but let's pick 100. We turn this little dial until it says 100. Now we take our reading by holding down the center button until the needle stops moving. And then we let go, which conveniently freezes the needle. And you have your measurement, the red line just past 80. The next thing you do is you find this little black triangle and turn this dial until the black triangle is pointing at the same number as the red needle, just past 80. Now, we know that we're shooting film, we're not shooting any slow motion stuff or any fast motion stuff, which means that we're shooting 24 frames per second. So we go down to this little cine scale here and find the 24 for 24 frames, which conveniently has a little orange line that points down to a number, which is one dot or one third less than F2. So that we know that our f-stop for shooting this scene for this measurement is one third less than two. Simple as that. So you don't super duper duper definitely need to know how to use one of these or even own one to shoot video because the advantage of video is you know what your image is going to look like. However, we're going to be talking about the technique of lighting in upcoming videos, stuff like lighting ratios when you're doing Rembrandt lighting. For that, you're definitely going to need to know how these things work, at least in theory. So we got to do our homework. Thank you for watching. Check back soon.